Hello, Warbirders. Before starting today, I'd like to thank supporters Nicholas Meyer and super supporters Stan L. Marcus and Stephen Frick and Tobias Belek for their continuing and generous support. Today, I'm going to have a little fun with you and give the World of Warbirds treatment to the podcast itself. Stick around to the end and you'll find out why. Design and Development I was born in the 1970s in southern Quebec, Canada, near Montreal. Growing up, I was always obsessed with airplanes and aviation, probably starting with watching agricultural spray planes working the fields near home. I'd hear that distinctive wow, wow sound of the crop dusters making their turns and passes of the cornfields, hop on my bike and try to catch them in action. The best would be to stand directly under where they'd pass to actually feel the sounds of them go over. I still remember the smell of the spray and still wonder if I'm going to catch cancer or something because of it. So, as has been said many times in this podcast, I was bitten by the aviation bug. So why didn't I start flying right away? It was a combination of the lack of imagination of the possible, plus lack of access. As a boy, I just didn't think it was a realistic thing to become a pilot, and I didn't know any pilots to just show me that it could be done. I didn't even have a local airport to go to and hang out and offer to wash airplanes for lessons or anything. Also, in those pre-internet days, there just were some things that seemed beyond your horizon. So what I've just described is the reason why I have an aviation club at the school where I work, why I have a simulator in my office that I allow the students to fly, and why I try to bring up as many kids as possible in my Cessna 172, you know, so that they get that access and might just get bitten by that aviation bug. Who knows where they might end up, and some of them have actually become professional pilots and mechanics. The love of warbirds came from a souvenir booklet my parents had brought home from the National Aviation Museum in Ottawa. I loved looking over the various types of airplanes, the fighters, the bombers, and all the different combinations and variants. And I started collecting warbirds, like some kids collect dinosaurs, by learning about them and building them in model form. Christmases and birthdays were the best, as there would always be some new warbird books to curl up with to read and to stare at the glossy pictures. At school, I always enjoyed putting together projects and making presentations in front of the class. I know, weird. I remember doing a project on the Spitfire and another one on the atomic bomb and the B-29 in grade 6. My teacher considered them good enough to send me out to other classes to share. I realized that teaching new things to people was even more rewarding than just learning it yourself. Career-wise, I did many things, but there was always a common thread in educating, teaching, or instructing, whether I was in the army, the railway, or actual schools. Eventually, I did learn to fly, and again ended up in the instructing side of things. Even later, becoming a supervising instructor, mentoring new instructors on how to teach this magical skill of flying to others. The concept of podcasts arrived on the scene and opened up a whole new world for people with diverse interests. No more was one trapped by just what was on the radio at one's location and time. You could find exactly what you wanted to learn about and download the content to listen to whenever and wherever. I loved podcasts and listened to all kinds of stuff. History of the Roman Empire, true crime, current events, the vintage space program. But when I did a search on warbirds, wanting to hear a series on individual aircraft from the World War II era, there was nothing. I wished that someone would come along and make one. Kind of an audio version of those birthday and Christmas books that I had received and enjoyed. I wondered if I should try to do it myself. 
If only there was more free time at home to learn how and devote to starting a podcast. But the 9-to-5 grind always seemed to get in the way. Then COVID hit. What's the expression? There's no great loss without some small gain? Prototypes. As an educator, being stuck at home and having to learn how to work remotely made it much easier to make that next step towards making a podcast. So when I wasn't preparing the next geography or history lesson, I started researching how to produce a podcast, learning about hosting platforms, buying a cheap microphone and stand from Amazon, and finally writing and recording the story of the P-40 Warhawk. Why that one? Because for years, there had been a poster of a P-40 on my wall, staring down with those grinning teeth saying, Just do it. The prototype episode took to the air on April 13th, 2020, and in the first week, 14 people listened to it. Well, that was a start. Production. I was surprised that the title World of Warbirds hadn't been taken, but I was glad that it hadn't as it was just perfect. It rolls off the tongue and describes exactly what I wanted to do. Starting with the P-40 episode and evolving moving forward, production for each episode starts with having the urge to explore a particular warbird, and then researching the heck out of it, often early in the morning. Perhaps from working on farms as a kid, and then solidified in the infantry, I've always been a crazy early riser. What else are you supposed to do when awake at 5.30 in the morning? You can't start cutting the lawn yet. So I started writing and recording episodes. And editing. No one ever thinks about the editing. No one knows how much breathing, coughing, clearing the throat, swallowing spit, and licking lips a human does until hearing yourself on a recording. It's disgusting. I initially tried finding some kind of electronic filter to eliminate these sounds, but no. The best way to do it is to re-listen to every second of the recording and cut out all the weird noises. I can now easily spot what a breath or a chair squeak looks like on waveform in order to delete them. After researching, writing, recording, editing, publishing, and then promoting on Facebook... There is the satisfaction of getting feedback and watching the listener numbers increase. Getting messages and suggestions and making friends with other Warbird fans all over the world was so rewarding. Operational History As podcast production chugged along, I often wished that I could show rather than just tell about the aircraft. Posting pictures on the Facebook page was one way, but starting a YouTube channel was another. The YouTube channel took off on July 23rd, 2022, and became another rewarding way to share. Especially when YouTube makes it so much easier to monetize than the audio podcast platforms. Getting caught up thinking about financial reward is a tricky concept when it comes to making content and, frankly, it can ruin the fun if one starts obsessing about it. The creation and the sharing are the primary reward, but doing it does take a huge chunk of time and one does wonder how much one's time is worth. At one point, I started asking for support through PayPal, and some folks have been very generous, and every penny has been appreciated. There are costs associated with running a podcast, and there are investments that definitely need to be made. My recording computer is so old and glitchy that it can no longer be upgraded and needs to be replaced. How bad can it be? So bad that the power button has popped off, and the computer needs to be started by inserting a piece of copper wire inside to make a connection. I basically have to hotwire it. It is so slow that it takes 10 minutes to start and it restarts often because it crashes so much. If it were an airplane, it would be declared unairworthy and sent to the scrap heap. Survivors. The YouTube channel has actually become quite popular and rewarding both in terms of supporting itself financially and by the instant feedback of the comments. The comments are a blessing and a curse. 
I especially love hearing about fathers or grandfathers and mothers who built, flew, fought, or died in these marvelous machines. I am starstruck by folks who reach out to say that they themselves work on or fly these precious vintage birds, and I am honored to hear from past or present servicemen and women. But I am also cursed by comments about how my pronunciation of German words is so terrible, and how my American accent is bad, which is funny, because I'm Canadian, eh? And how I mix up Britain and England. Aren't they the same? I don't get that sort of immediate feedback with a podcast. And good or bad, I kind of wish I did. Although YouTube has its advantages, I actually prefer audio podcasting. I like that time doesn't matter so much. If we want to divert and talk about something, it doesn't really matter. I like the intimacy of being right in your ear and how we actually work together to get the ideas across. I describe stuff as best I can, and then you take over to form the pictures in your mind. I want to do more podcasting rather than less, but in order to have the podcast support itself, I'm going to have to do some platform diverting. To use a warbird metaphor, there may be some flack and AA up ahead. But as I make the changes, I hope you stay on my wing and that we'll get through it together. There are still so many warbirds to talk about. I don't think we'll ever run out of material. So one of the things I've done is to set up a World of Warbirds Patreon. The idea is to have a core of supporting members who get some advantages, and also play a role in guiding the podcast towards what you guys want to hear. So, join me. There'll be information in the show notes. There is a free membership level if you just want to get a taste before you decide to commit. And I'll look forward to seeing you over there. So, until next time.